Welcome to Mr. Ridley's Design and Technology. This clip is about standard components and it is for GCSE Design and Technology. Standard components, early manufacturing. Etoile Bugatti had a, a fanatical attention to detail and, uh, and also combined this with his lim the limited availability of mass produced parts meant that all the small components and fixings for the 1924 Type 35 Bugatti were made in one factory. So if you see this vehicle here, which is the Type 35 Bugatti, the nuts, the bolts, every little part um, was controlled and it was manufactured in one factory. Now manufacturers use standard components when creating products. These parts are parts that they do not make themselves, but instead source from other companies who are specialist in those parts. So for example, bicycle manufacturers may not make gears. They would go to a gear manufacturer to buy gear sets from them. Standard components, advantages. Standard parts are less expensive <coughs> to manufacturers. It is obviously often cheaper to purchase from outside suppliers who can mass produce the items in huge quantities. These 608 ball bearings have become incredibly low priced during, due to them being manufactured in large quantities. Standard components are also more reliable as the companies producing them are specialized and have more expertise in that smaller area. These steel gears are manufactured by sintering or powdered metal process, which is highly specialized. Standard components can be very varied and can make up a significant proportion of all the parts of some products. Typical categories are fixings and fasteners, mechanical components and electron, electronic or electrical parts. We can see here with this cordless drill an exploded diagram of the parts and things like the motor, and the batteries are all standard components. They are not made by the drill manufacturer. Standard components, the 608 bearing. The 608 bearing is a small 22 millimeter diameter ball bearing with an eight, eight millimeter central hole. These were universally used in skateboard trucks and due to the high demand, these were produced in very high quantities. These bearings sub subsequently can became so low priced that four of them could be used in a manufactured speed to manufacture a fidget spinner which could be sold for just a few pounds so you can see that bearing there and i say just because the the huge quantities manufactured in a standard size made them really cheap so that is a very common standard component standard components for wood metal and plastic so here we've got a range of standard components so for wood we've got wood screws obviously available in all kinds of sizes and um, and materials. Hinges, they were used in wood, they would be a standard component that would be available in different sizes. Nuts and bolts used to join metal. Pop rivets used to join metal and knockdown fittings. Knockdown fittings are the type of fittings that are used in flat pack furniture. Here's some mechanical standard components. The sintered metal gears that we've looked at a bit, uh, earlier on. Belts and pulleys and obviously ball bearings. These are all mechanical components that, that manufacturers would buy in from other manufacturers rather than making themselves. Electronic components. Here's some electronic components. Light emitting diodes, LEDs, 3.5 millimeter jack plugs, resistors, and a three pin plug and kettle lead. These are all electronic components that would be bought in. They wouldn't be manufactured in house. Disadvantages. The use of standard components can mean that products with many bought in parts can have very large supply chains with parts from one product traveling all over the world. Delay in supplying just one part can mean that the production of the product is halted. So we've got a really extended supply chain with parts coming in all around the world. Since COVID in 2020, the Meddings Engineering Company that makes the pillar drills that we use in this room have announced they will be making more of their parts in-house to be less reliant on parts shipped from around the globe. This phenomenon has been referred to as slowbilization, and this is the slowing of globalization and the much more reliant or much using much more parts um, 